Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days wages and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one I suppose whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, because she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Yeah, yeah that story of the ointment, I guess, reminds me of of a story that we've obviously talked about before in a couple of situations, but I've heard this through hearsay, so hopefully it's not false, but I've heard that, um, <laughs> that Mother Teresa, um, there, was, there was a situation, going back to Mother Teresa, that she was on the street and a, a wealthy donor had given her a um, diamond ring and had just donated it to, with, to Mother Teresa to, to do with as she, as she pleases. And this woman had obviously assumed that Mother Teresa would sell the diamond ring for the money for quite a large sum of money and buy lots of food but instead Mother Teresa instantly gave it to the first poor woman that she met and this person was quite taken back and she said you know that no matter how rich or poor you are you're going to feel some dignity mm. and that that the love which that woman will have felt from from Mother Teresa is maybe more important than any food she could potentially give her which is so interesting, thinking of last week's gospel about the, the loaves and the fishes, um, just because, you know, in, in that gospel, we're talking about feeding a lot of people, and, and you could think, well, well, maybe God is teaching us that we really need to, to make everything very equal. But I think in this gospel, it's almost showing the creative love of God, because, mm. you know, this ointment is just being used, and it's so expensive, but it's not about how expensive it is. It's, it's about how much love there is there and and um, and there's not even really a th much thought given well you know by Jesus to to the to the money or what could be done with the money from the yeah. women but um, yeah. yeah which sort of makes you think a bit about um, Simon as well and and his reaction to the Pharisee who invited Jesus to them mm. his reaction to the whole situation yeah you know it's a really interesting reaction like he's obviously like as a Pharisee in his Jewish way of, of thinking about holiness and this woman is a sinner and a, a person who is unholy, unclean, can't even come into the same room or eat or can't touch, definitely can't touch you. And so he's quite taken back that, that Jesus, who's supposed to be you know, a, a leader and a teacher, is happy to accept, accept this woman even to be in his presence. And so, um, mm. and so I guess Jesus' little parable, which he gave, about who loves who more and forgiveness was yeah. pretty touching, eh? Yeah, well, I mean, it's even interesting that he invited Jesus. It doesn't say, it just says he invited Jesus to dine with him. And it, and it makes you think, what was he thinking about Jesus? Was he, was mm. he just curious or was he, you know, 
maybe he just was attracted to Jesus, but whatever he was thinking when he invited him in, he didn't, he didn't, um, you know, Jesus said to him, um, you could have, you could have anointed me when I came in, you could have, um, you know, you didn't give me any water for my feet, all these things mm-hmm. that he could have done, which might have been like, you know, might be something extra, but how often do you get to have Jesus in your house? Yeah. Um, once in his life. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I guess, I guess Simon's just such a, a perfect analogy to the way a lot of us, like myself, I'm living my life, like often, often I guess we can think we're doing enough and, you know, maybe we go to Mass on a Sunday or we're, we're reading scripture and we become quite, I guess, happy with the things we're doing. And um, maybe we have to, maybe this is telling us that, I guess, we're in a race to get to the end and no matter what we can do, is it's never going to be enough. Mm. Enough, and we've always got to be striving to do more, to give more, to love more, yeah. not to become complacent, assuming that yeah. we're perfect Christians. Yeah, there's a um, a, a priest who who helps form the um, Mother Teresa sisters who who talks about the different cushions that mm. um that you can have in your life. You know, you can have a you can have a little cushy life, and one of your cushions can be, oh yes, I say, I I go to mass every week, or I say my rosary every day. And these are all little things that just sort of make you feel comfortable. Um, but, but really, what, what God's asking us to do is go with all our sin and, and just to be there to receive his great mercy, mm. which is exactly what this woman has done. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, and I, I guess it's, it's true what you're saying. Like We're all a bit, I guess, like Simon, sometimes we just go and we have these little cushions, like we go mm. to Mass, and, and um, they're almost for us, whereas really, well... It, you know, to make us feel comfortable, whereas really we, we're we called to go and to receive the mercy of God, mm. however that might be. And I guess, I mean, it's, we, we have an understanding that the Pharisees knew a lot about religion, they knew a lot about the laws of the time, so I guess these laws and the scripture which Simon would have would have known would have been his little, his little cushion, but maybe he just didn't have that same depth of understanding about love, which, which this lady clearly had, mm. and so because he didn't, hadn't completely accepted this love from God, he'd sort of fallen onto this little, you know, this little comfy life of knowing the scriptures and understanding different rules and regulations, but maybe really didn't have a true, a true knowledge of what love is and the love which has been given to him freely from God and that all he has to do is receive it. And so because he didn't have this depth of love in his heart that this lady had, he didn't have the full capacity to give love back in return. Mm-hmm. Whereas it seems to me that, on the other hand, this woman really has a wife, she's a sinner and she's been living, I mean, it, it spells it out that she's a sinner, whatever what is it, whatever this means, some people interpret it as she was a prostitute, others look at it in a different way, but um, despite all this, she clearly has a deep understanding of love and forgiveness and has come and just giving everything to Jesus and yeah. clearly yeah. saying she wants to turn her life around. And, and it's interesting how, how Jesus, in his in his story about the the uh, creditor, he he says, uh, um, you know, whose larger debt was forgiven, and then later says, you know, um, but the one whom little is forgiven loves little, mm. and the one who's forgiven a lot loves a lot. Well, it's it's interesting because was Simon did he have less? Sin, maybe not, but his pride was almost, he's forgiven, but he, his pride was stopping him from, from accepting that forgiveness or for accepting mm. that love, um, you know, and, and that's, I guess, all we have to do is we have to go in our own lives and, and just accept this love, accept this forgiveness, yeah. um, and that will allow us to love more as well, the yeah. people around us and love God and, and mm. um, just have that great love in our life and understand what this woman obviously has understood. Yeah, yeah it's really beautiful, I guess, so we can really say in conclusion is that we must love <laughs> we must love one another and we'll be cool. forgiven so simple. <laughs>